Hey guys, welcome back to another testing video. Approximately two weeks ago, a company called Big Battery reached out to me to see if I wanted to test out any of their batteries or cells on my channel. I do have a lot of companies on a weekly basis trying to send me different things, especially lithium ion related battery packs as well as power stations. And on average, I turned down approximately 95% of those offers. Now, knowing how many cells are sold online, especially from China, where they give you a capacity rating, this one here is 2,600 milliamp hours, some of them go as high as five, six, seven, eight thousand milliamp hour capacities, and that's for an 18650 cell, like you see right here. Unfortunately, an 18650 has a max capacity of around 3,400 milliamp hours or 3.4 amp hours. So what I like to do on my channel is test certain cells or batteries to see which one performs the best and has specifications as close as possible to what the manufacturer states. I requested that the company send me out these cells you see right here. These are 21700 lithium ion cells. And these are the same size cells that are used in Tesla Model 3s. Of course, in a Tesla Model 3, there are thousands of these being used to create those battery packs. Around two and a half years ago, Tesla worked with Panasonic to create a 2170 cell. And they did that because they wanted to have a higher energy density cell. The 2170 cell has a chemistry that's a little different than other cells. It has a lower cobalt content and higher nickel content. The 2170s, or in this case the 21700s, have 50% more volume than an 18650 cell, but can deliver up to two times the current. So right over here, if we take a look at this one, the 18650, the 18, the 18, that refers to the diameter of the cell. So this is 18 millimeters. The 65, I don't know why they even bother with the zero, but the 65 is 65 millimeters from this end to that end. Now this one here, let me take one out so we can compare. Model 3, 3.7 volt, nominal voltage, 18.5 watt hours. This has a 5,000 milliamp hour rating. And you can see NCR, which is Panasonic, 21,700. So this one is 21 millimeters in diameter, which is three millimeters more than the 18650. And this one here is 70 millimeters from top to bottom versus 65 for the other one. When placed side by side, you can see the differences much easier. After Tesla worked with Panasonic to design the cell, other manufacturers such as Samsung started producing the same 2170 or 21700 cells. Both of these cells are flat tops. Now what I'm going to be doing in this video is testing this Panasonic out to see how well it performs. I wanna see if this performs very close to what this company says. I let them know beforehand that the testing is going to be done and regardless of the results, if it's good or bad, my viewers are going to know about it. They were pretty confident that these cells were going to perform extremely well. So I'm going to be checking the internal resistance. According to the company, it has an internal resistance between 12 and 14 milliohms. The capacity is 5,000 milliamp hours. So we're going to be performing three different battery capacity tests. And under the higher current drain test, we're going to take a look at the temperature of the cell to see how it holds up. And after the cell has been fully depleted, we're going to try rapid charging it at a three amp current. The company claims you can charge these at three amps. The discharge rating for this cell is 3C, so up to 15 amps. We're going to be testing at a one amp level, a five amp level, and a 10 amp level. Okay, let's get started with the internal resistance measurements. I'm going to remove three cells from the box at random to see how they compare. To test the internal resistance, I'm going to be using this meter right here. I find the battery analyzers and charging stations tend to give results that are not really that accurate. And this tester here does a much better job. So let's try three different cells. Fifteen milliohm. Fifteen. Fifteen. 
and it looks like they're all around 15, so that's pretty good. Okay, let's go on to the first test, which is going to be a 1 amp constant current draw on the 21700 cell. I'll be taking voltage readings every 15 minutes until the test is terminated at 2.5 volts. For the first test, what I'm going to do is discharge this cell at the rate of 1 amp. Okay, let's get started. Okay, you see it just finished, and the voltage is beginning to climb, and we can take a look at the capacity, 4,810 milliamp hour, which is pretty good, and it took 4 hours and 48 minutes. Alright, let's take a look at the discharge curve, and you can see right here, starting just under 4.2, the initial drop to around 4 volts, and then it trended all the way down to where it terminated at 2.5 volts at 4 hours and 48 minutes. Okay, for the second test we're going to be using the 5 amp discharge rate and as you can see the cell is being held in my holder that I designed in a previous video. You can see the voltage immediately dropping down under the higher load. The maximum temperature of the cell reached around 38.4 C with the 5 amp current drain Okay, we just finished. We could take a look right here. And we have 4,785 milliamp hours. Let's take a look at the discharge curve. Started just around 4.2, just under, dropped to 3.7, and then it trended all the way down to where it terminated at 2.5 volts, and it took 57 minutes. Okay, for the final test, we're going to be using a 10 amp constant current load. The cell is fully charged. I'm going to be taking voltage measurements every 5 minutes until the test has completed. During the test, we'll carefully monitor the cell's temperature. Okay, right here in this chart, you can see we started off just under 4.2. Very quickly, within 5 minutes, we were at 3.7. And when the test terminated at 2.5 volts, it took 29 minutes. The capacity was 4,833 milliamp hours. So the three tests that we performed showed that the cells have an average capacity of around 4,800 milliamp hours, which is 96% of the stated capacity. So not too bad. Okay, let me pop this one out of the holder. The next thing I'm going to do is take the cell that was used for the first test, the 1 amp discharge test, and we're going to see how well it can tolerate a 3 amp charge rate. Okay, now this also has a charging current capacity. So we'll be able to take a look at the very end at how much current went into that battery in milliamp hours. Okay, we're at 97% of a full charge, just over 2 hours. You can see the current dropped from a 3 amp charging rate down to 630 milliamps, 91 degrees Fahrenheit, 
and the temperature never exceeded 102 F or 39 C. This is going to keep accumulating on the charge capacity until this reaches 100%. So no problem at all charging at a 3 amp rate, which is right around 0.6 C. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.